So this is a bit amazing. Yeah, that's wow. gorgeous. That's like a wood pile to end all wood piles. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Wow. Oh, how lovely that they've left it here. Whoa. I bet there's all kinds of insects living in here. Yeah. <laughs> it's gorgeous. Yeah. Let's see something over there. So I'm just having a look at um, this bit here. This, this is sort of um, really rotten. I mean, I, I, I dare say there will be creatures uh, who come and use, sort of get inside the bark and there's vegetation growing on it already. But, but this is the, the more rotten it is, mm -hmm. the more suitable it is for, for burrowing insects. Um, so, so solitary wasps, there are one or two solitary bees that do burrow into dead wood um, in this country. But, but so much more, I, know, I, I guess, I don't know how long this has been here. It doesn't look as if it's been here a very long time. But I guess in time it'll get, it'll be covered in fungi when it gets all damp and really, really rotted. And then of course all the nutrients will sort of go back into the earth. So it's fantastic. I wonder if it was one of the old, I, I don't know anything about um, conifers, pines, yeah, but it was I guess. blown down in the storm. So it was actually blown down. Wow. Yeah, wow. Incredible. Yeah, I've, I've got a few. <laughs> I've got a few old logs in our <laughs> garden in a corner sitting by a fence. They're left over from, from what we didn't burn in the wood, bin to, wood, wood burner, sorry, over winter. This is <laughs> something else. Oh, look, so look, there's a hole here. That looks as if something. Oh, quite a few. Oh, wow. So these, I'm guessing these would be wood boring beetles, but then, but there are bees small enough. So one of our smallest bees could actually, is, is small enough to, to make its nest, one of our smallest wow. solitary bees to make its nest in that tiny little hole. Wow, that's incredible. It's bonkers, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> nice to sit on as well. <laughs> we can have our lunch on here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Whoa, there as well. fascinating all of all of the beauty within something that you know some people would look at and just say oh it's an old bit of wood but there's so much beauty here and and life as well it's almost like a piece of art do you remember did you ever when you were a child used to do put pieces of paper on bark and do oh, yes. bark with wax crayons yes yeah I used to love doing that it's fantastic. that and um, and in in old churches we used to my mum always used to come armed with little wax sticks and pieces of paper and we used to do all of the the knights um, on the floors and the plaques and things yeah. but barks so much more beautiful wow I feel like children have a very innate connection with nature just naturally and I feel like sometimes as we grow up we can lose that a little bit but um, yeah I think it's, it's really important to to reconnect and have, have that curiosity for nature and everything have, around us. Have you always felt that? Were you, did you, as a child, did you have sort of a thing for nature? I think I was, I was very curious, sort of, I loved being outdoors. I loved sort of just, yeah, being around, being going to the woods was like my favourite thing to do. Yeah. But I feel like sort of growing up, I lost that a little bit. But yeah. since then, it's sort of, especially in terms of mental health, reconnecting with nature has had massive benefits. And, really? Yeah. So that's quite, quite a, a big thing for you, the... Yeah, definitely. What it does for your mental health or how it, how it sort of, mm -hmm. and it does improve mm -hmm. things, doesn't it? I know if, I've, if I'm going through, and, and I'm fortunate not to um, have serious mental health problems, but whenever I'm down or feeling mm -hmm. um, blue or, or even just everyday stressed, I find that all I need to do, but sometimes the big thing is to get yourself outside. It's hard sometimes when you're in a bad place to get yourself outside. Mm -hmm. But once you do, um, yeah. Everything, it, it just falls away, doesn't it? Definitely, yeah. The, the benefits of ecotherapy are just amazing. And I know doctors are now prescribing sort of going out into nature now, I heard. Really? Which is, yeah, which is it's fantastic, really, I think. But, um, and I think it's there's in, it's in Japan, I forget what it's, what the term is. It's shoo and something. Oh, oh, forest bathing. Forest bathing. Yeah. Shoo, I want to say shoo and yoko, but it's not that. Yeah. Forest bathing. Yeah, um, I, that's, that is brilliant. I read a book on that and it is, yeah, it's beautiful sort of how I wish in this culture we were more sort of connected with 
the benefits of nature and how being out in trees and our, like our symbiotic relationship with them is, is so important for, for our well-being and yeah. Well, it's sad that we've lost it. I, I know I, you say, I mean, I, I don't, you're, are you in your 20s? Yeah. You're in your 20s, I'm in my 60s. Um, and I lost all of this for decades, literally decades. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it was in my, oh, was my late 40s. I was walking across the Malvern Hills and, and I literally, I suddenly, I realised literally in an instant that I knew more about the French Revolution than I did about the trees yeah. around me. Yeah. Um, wow. And it was a shock wake up call. And I, I think some, I was lucky, mm. you know, and, and since then I've been a nightmare to go for a walk with because <laughs> I look at everything. But I think some people spend a lifetime never having had that mm. connection. You see children small children um, already who are pulled away mm. from messy areas or told not to touch mm. things like slugs or or beetles and or to, to swat mm. insects so I think it's it's conditioning yeah. very often from an early age but definitely you're lucky to have uh, have rediscovered it yeah. um, early on yeah. very lucky